Windows 11, Microsoft's newest operating system, is packed full of enhancements and features that are quite useful. So coming up to help you get the most out of using Windows 11, I'll show you tips, tricks, and features you'll want to use to improve your overall experience using the operating system. Let's get started. When you first launch Windows 11, you'll notice the Start menu and Taskbar icons are center aligned instead of being located on the left. Personally, I think this looks a lot better and makes it more convenient to access your Start menu and pin programs with less movement of your mouse. But if you're someone that prefers the old layout with the Start menu and pin programs aligned to the left, right click on an empty space in your Taskbar and select Taskbar Settings. Scroll down to the bottom of this page and click Taskbar Behaviors. Let's scroll down some more. For taskbar alignment, click the drop down. You have two choices, click on left. You'll now notice that the start menu and pin programs have been moved to the left. As I said, I now prefer the center alignment, so I'll switch it back. A feature available in previous versions of Windows was the ability to minimize all windows except the one that is currently active by clicking the title bar and shaking your mouse. It used to be called arrow shake, but in Windows 11, they now call it Title Bar Window Shake. It's now turned off by default. To turn it on, let's open the Settings app. Without using a keyboard shortcut, click on Start here in the taskbar, and by default, you should see it in your pinned apps. Otherwise, to open it, you can use the keyboard shortcut Windows Key Plus I. Scroll down and select Multitasking. For Title Bar Window Shake, if turned off, click the toggle to turn it on. Microsoft has made a change in Windows 11 that has annoyed quite a few people. When you right-click on a file, it will now only show you what Microsoft deems to be the most important items in the menu. Now, if you want to print or access other choices, you must take the extra step of clicking on Show More Options. And what shows up looks like the old right-click menu. Some people have also been unhappy that Microsoft has removed the ability to pin selected folders to the Start menu. Well, you can still add folders to Start, but only those that are system folders. To add system folders to Start, open the Settings app. In the left pane, select Personalization. If you need to, scroll down to Start and select it. Then click on Folders. For those of you that want to see folders when you open the Start menu, toggle the switch on for each. You have many to choose from. I'll turn on Documents, Downloads, Music, Pictures, and Videos. When you're done, close out the Settings app. Now when you go to Start, you'll see those folders you turned on to the left of the Power button. While we're on the subject of the Start menu, you'll notice apps pinned by default by Microsoft that you might want to get rid of. To unpin any app, right-click on it and select Unpin from Start. On the flip side, if you'd like to pin any app to the Start menu, click on All Apps. Find it in the list. After most used, they're listed in alphabetical order. Click on the header for each numbered or lettered entry to quickly jump through the list. When you find the app that you'd like to pin, right-click on it and select Pin to Start. Click on Back. If you don't see it listed, scroll down and you can easily move any pinned app by left clicking on it and dragging it to where you want it. A new feature shown in another one of our videos is the ability to arrange any open windows on your screen. To snap any window on your screen, hover your cursor over the Resize Maximize button in the upper right. You'll see various snapping templates. Select a zone within one of the layouts listed. Then select the other windows you want to snap to the layout. This especially comes in handy if you're on a laptop or any PC with only one monitor. Just like previous iterations of Windows, Windows 11 also has a secondary start menu, sometimes referred to as the secret start menu. To open it, right click the start menu icon, or you could use the keyboard shortcut Windows key plus X. Here you can access your power options, device manager, Windows terminal, the Task Manager, and a whole lot more. On the right side of the taskbar, where you see the internet and speaker icons, when you left click on it, it'll bring up your quick settings panel. 
This is where you can quickly access some of the settings that you use most often, like your Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Nightlight, and others. To customize this panel, click the Edit icon. To unpin any settings buttons, click the Unpin icon for those that you want to remove. Otherwise, to add new quick settings buttons to the panel, here at the bottom, click on Add. Of the limited choices right now, select the ones that you'd like to add to the panel. Afterwards, click on Done. Microsoft really wants you to use their new features. Two examples are widgets and chat. You'll find them pinned to your taskbar. Unlike programs you pin to your taskbar that can also be unpinned, widgets and chat can't be unpinned the same way. If you right-click on them, it does nothing. To remove these from your taskbar, let's open Settings. Here on the left, choose Personalization. Scroll down and select Taskbar. In addition to Search and Task View, clicking the switches for Widgets and Chat will remove them from the taskbar. Widgets is actually kind of useful, so I'll turn that one back on. If you want absolute control of the volume for each program you have opened, you can now access the volume mixer from your taskbar by right-clicking the speaker icon and selecting Open Volume Mixer. You now see sliders for each program you have opened. Moving these left or right will adjust the volume accordingly. To reduce distractions, the much improved Focus Assist will help your productivity while working, playing games, or some other activity. To use it, open the Settings app. In System, go to Focus Assist. If turned off, you'll get notifications from all your apps. Or you could set it to Priority Only, and the setting that will give you the least distractions is Alarms Only. This will hide all notifications except for the alarms you have set. But when we scroll down, the Automatic Rules section is where Focus Assist truly shines. Based on the activity listed, if enabled, you can set the appropriate Focus Assist level that suits you the best. For example, selecting when I'm playing a game, it'll let you choose the focus level for that activity. Currently set to Priority Only, I'll click the drop down and select Alarms Only. By default, Microsoft will hide the file extensions for file types like JPEG, PNG, MP3, and the other popular formats. If you'd like the file extension types to be visible, click Search in the taskbar and type File Explorer Options. Click on it. Select the View tab. In Advanced Settings, untick the box next to Hide Extensions for Known File Types. Click Apply and OK to exit. Many people don't realize this. Clicking Apply is not necessary. You can just click on OK to save your changes. Now when looking at your files, you'll see the file extension types at the end of your file names. Let's go back to the Taskbar Widgets panel we were discussing earlier. I'm still not a huge fan, but it's growing on me. It lets you quickly check out the weather, sports, stock prices, the news, and a whole lot more. You can add additional widgets by selecting Add Widgets, but we won't go there right now. It's easy enough, you can all figure it out on your own. To customize your existing widgets, click the three-dot menu icon in the upper right of the widget. You can select the size to see more or less information. Right now it's currently on small, there's medium, and here's large. Thank goodness Verstappen ended up winning the championship. Selecting Customize Widget will let you add additional variables to that widget. For example, in this sports widget, typing NFL and clicking the plus will add additional information regarding that topic to this widget. If you want to move any of the widgets, just hover your cursor over the widget and left click and drag it wherever you want it. And I'll take this one and drag it to the left side. If you're using a PC with a touch screen, you can change the look and theme of the touch keyboard. On a side note, while tempting, don't ever buy a desktop all-in-one PC. Those things are horrid. You'll find the icon to the touch keyboard in the lower right. If you don't see the icon, right-click the taskbar and select Taskbar Settings. If the switch for the touch keyboard is off, click to enable the touch keyboard. Let's close this out. Touch or click the touch keyboard icon to make it visible. In the upper left of the keyboard, click or touch the settings icon. Then select theme and resize. I'll close the keyboard here. Select the theme you want. I'll go with Indigo Breeze. After making your selection, close the window. Now when you open the touch keyboard, you'll notice that your new theme has been applied. 
Earlier, we were discussing Focus Assist to selectively decide to turn off or set a priority level for notifications. If you find the notifications in Windows 11 just to be way too much, you can turn those off altogether. So let's go into Settings. In System, select Notifications. Notifications are turned on by default. Clicking on the switch will turn them off for all apps. You can also turn off notifications individually from apps and other senders as well. If you want to give your eyes a break, the dark mode and nightlight features are still available in Windows 11. To enable dark mode, let's open the Settings app. In the left pane, select Personalization, then Colors. And choose your mode, click the drop down, and select Dark. That is so much better. If you want to give your eyes more of a break, let's enable the nightlight by going to System and Display here at the top. Click on the switch for nightlight to turn it on. Screen recorders won't capture this, but you'll notice with it on, it'll block blue light with warmer colors, which is believed to help people who use their computers before they go to bed sleep better. If you click into nightlight, you can set the strength of the blue light filter, and you can also schedule a time for it to automatically turn on and turn off. Windows 11, when compared to previous versions, makes it a more tedious process to change the default apps. For example, if you want to change your default web browser, Open the Settings app. In the left pane, select Apps. Then, Default Apps. It used to be that if you wanted to change your web browser, you would just go to that category and select a web browser from the list. Now you have to find that browser in the list. And there it is. Once selected, you then have to select each file type individually. Of course, it's gonna recommend Microsoft Edge for all file types it can handle. If you don't want to use Edge, find the program in the list, select it, and click OK. To completely change the default web browser, you must do this for each file type listed. This is both cumbersome and time consuming. Shame on you, Microsoft. If you don't want to see unwanted ads in the apps that you use, thankfully you can turn those off. Here's how you do that. Open Settings. In the left pane, select Privacy and Security. Then under Windows Permissions, click on General. For all four listed, if turned on, click the switch off for each. Themes are still a thing in Windows 11 and not too much has changed. To select a default theme, right click on your desktop and select Personalize. Then select Themes. Themes will change your background, sounds, color, and sometimes your mouse cursor at the same time. The one I'm using right now is called Aerial Beaches Premium. To activate any other installed theme, just simply click on it, or if you want to find additional themes in the Microsoft Store, click Browse Themes. Those that say Premium are also free and contain 4K images. To download and install it, click on Get. Thanks for watching. If this video is useful for you, give it a thumbs up. If you have a tip or trick for Windows 11 you'd like to share, let us know about it in the comments. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on our upcoming Windows 11 videos and other tech-related stuff here on Tech Gumbo.